So I have a uh, Max Race ECU here that I did some wiring on for a customer. I'm just going to just show a little bit how the software works, or at least some of the inputs and outputs that I have configured on this. Um, there's a ton of different settings and things that you can look at inside of Mtune. Down to you know your general fuel here, how many injectors, what type of injection are you using, what your stoichiometric ratio is, um, are you doing staged injectors, so like primary and secondary, what size they are, dead times, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Fuel priming, how long the fuel pump comes on, you know whether you want lambda control on, um, fuel adaption for a long-term history of uh, fueling that's outside of where you had it programmed in and you can make adjustments to your VE table etc. Um, under the motor, motorsport section here you've got your you know launch control, two-step, anti-lag, shift cut, power management, all that type of stuff. In order to get these active you actually have to go in and turn outputs on um, or actually inputs uh, that would you know like a button or a lever or something like that that you pull in to activate this. When you do that then this feature pops up and then you can go configure it inside of that menu. Um, <clears throat> show some of the inputs here so you get your coolant intake air temperature and throttle position that stuff is set up here you've got your lambda sensor your wideband sensor which the controller is built into the max race ECU uh, digital inputs um, there is one that's currently not being used this one right here but other than that I've got um, clutch switch and in the lower left hand corner here if I go and look at digital input you can actually see the different values so for clutch if I hold that in right now you'll see DIN 1 active and it light up green um, they've got a rolling anti-lag on the mode up button on the right hand control of a gen 2 BUSA so you'll see that, that guy is going I've got a boost table selector is mowed down so a short press gets me to this table a long press gets me to this table another short press gets me back to where I started so you can do like three different tables that you can select there, which is kind of, which is kind of neat. Um, you also see the speedo input one is now moving. I'm interjecting a speed signal, which we've got wired into um, this Max. So we've got, um, I want to look at speed, not gear. Sorry. Um, so now we've got, you know, we're going 10 kilometers per hour. Anyway, I can crank this up. You see, we've got a speed signal that's going in. Um, Likewise, so we've got some analog stuff set up here. There's a couple of temperature ones. If you want to set up the gear position, the stock Suzuki one, you set that up into a temperature channel. It needs a 5 volt pull up in order to work. So I've got this guy configured here, um, or turned on here, and then it actually gets set up inside of the speed gear over here. So you go to each gear, and then you get current value, and it'll bring in what the percentage is of its 5 volt uh, full scale to calibrate your gear position stuff. So if I type in gear here, now I go over and I move my gear position sensor, you'll see I'm in first gear, second gear, third gear, etc. Um, at the same time, you can also set up your number of pulses per kilometer. Um, so when you do this calibration, I think it asks you to go 50 kilometers per hour or 30 miles an hour. And then when that condition is met, you just hit the calibrate button. And then now, based upon your digital input for speed, you'll actually have a calibrated known speed value, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see here. What else do we have? So into the secondary throttle, um, that four pin connector over near the throttle bodies on a Gen 2 BUSA, um, that's not being used anymore. So I repurposed that to bring in a couple of signals, fuel pressure, and then an extra temperature. Um, so like another intake air temp on a, a turbocharged engine um, that's wired for this customer, but there's no temperature sensor plugged in um, and the fuel pressure. So this is a four pin connector, a repurposed two of the wires um, instead of being servo control wires are now five volt and sensor ground so that you can take in two different sensors through that one connector. The secondary throttle position sensor, I'm bringing in oil pressure. Um, so this is a 150 PSI sensor, uh, 150 PSI is uh, 1034 kPa, uh, so 0 and 150 PSI are at 0.5, or 0.5 and 4.5 volts, that's the calibration. Um, same thing for this one here, inside of the stock MAP sensor connector, um, I've got a harness built out to get the wastegate pressure 
and then um, there's a few spares here that are wired into the harness on the bike, um, basically through my ECU adapter box. Um, none of them are currently configured in the software, so there's two of them going to the Yosh connector along with 5 volt and sensor ground, and then also the barometric pressure sensor. Um, connector, which I give you mating connectors for those. Um, that's another that's another spare going there. If you jump into the outputs, this is kind of cool. Go into the output output config, and you can see all of the different outputs that you have available to you. Um, so there's eight ground outputs here for stuff like your boost control, sh uh, shift light, fuel pump, uh, radiator fans, all that stuff. If you can hear that in the background, I've got a relay clicking for the fuel pump. Same thing for the fan, um, for the shift light, I've got a little LED that's plugged in. Uh, boost control, I don't have that um, plugged in at the moment, but I wire that to the stock O2 sensor connector because there's 12 volt available at that connector, which is kind of nice and convenient. Um, so you've got your boost control block or your dual solenoids would just plug right into that harness and then be able to do closed loop boost control along with your wastegate pressure. Um, you've also got your lambda control stuff. That one's nothing really to configure there, but you've got six 12 volt outputs. None of those are currently being used, but they're wired to a little auxiliary connector near the ECU. Injector outs, um, and it's kind of cool. There's a way to actually test your injectors and your coils to make sure that you've got them in the correct firing order and everything. Um, but that's this is where you would configure those, and you'll notice that there's four 5 volt extras available here that you can use to run like one of the uh, max ECU IGBT uh, like solid state type relay for running a nitrous solenoid or something like that or even a fuel pump um, or you can also um, run like 5 volt type stuff with it as well so a tricolor LED you know combined with that mode down switch for selecting a different boost table each boost table that you go into could be displayed as a different color on that LED Under the diagnostic section, this is kind of cool. So you've got your injection and ignition output test. Um, so the fuel pump's not on right now, so hitting the injectors isn't going to do anything for me. I'd need to go turn that on. Um, but for the ignition stuff, if you can hear that in the background, each one that I hit is actually um, clicking one of my relays that I'm using to simulate that. And then for the injector stuff, you know, you would just select which injector bank or if both that you actually want to check. Um, you know, and if you needed to take the fuel pump, for example, and turn that on all the time, you could just select this. Now I actually have a fuel pump on, and then now when I hit the injector test, I'll see my little LEDs light up. You won't be able to hear those, so there's really not too much to demonstrate there. So let's set this back to fuel pump before I forget. Fuel pump relay. <clears throat> Um, something else that's really neat is the for trying to diagnose um, issues with the trigger um, trigger settings. If you're not reading your engine RPM, if you're getting uh, cam sync issues or the engine doesn't want to fire, um, this is a popular place to spend a little bit of time looking at all of your trigger settings, which are up here under inputs. And there's a lot to look at. You know, you've got your trigger input, what type of sensor it is, are you looking for it on a rising or a falling edge, what are you using for arming voltage, um, same thing with the cam sensor, and then what does your uh, trigger wheel look like, you know, missing tooth 24 minus 2 on a, on a Hayabusa. Um, so there's a lot of settings in here, and having one of these wrong will um, not allow the engine to start or not allow you to read engine RPM. Um, so again, this is a place where you'll spend some time if you've got any any issues with um, engine not wanting to fire. But if you go back down to the diagnostic section, um, if you go to trigger logger, so I've got a Max ECU Sport wired um, to this other Max Race, and I'm using it to generate a 24 minus 2 signal pattern. And on the screen, there's a little slider bar that I can slide around, and it'll actually start interjecting those signals and you'll see we're reading like you know 3200 rpm and I can move that up or down so now we can actually see the um, trigger stuff coming in and what's kind of cool is if you look at the trigger oscilloscope here you can actually take measurements I'm going to try to slow slow this down here so we can see that a little better 
All right, so I'll slow that down. Um, so now it'll actually show you with the little asterisk and stuff where it's actually triggering on, on everything. Um, so you can see our, our 24 minus 2, the big gap that you see there is the two missing teeth. And then um, we also have a signal coming in from, uh, from the cam. Now, again, these are fake generated signals, so they're nice, perfect-looking square waves. But um, pretty, pretty neat stuff to have built right into the software. Going into tuning, um, here's the fuel table. This is a map-based one. Um, most of the stuff I've done so far was like TPS-based, but the uh, map sensor is built into the Max ECU, so I don't have a real easy way to show that moving around. But you know, if I slide RPM around, it'll actually trace where we're at. And it'll show you a time history of where you've been in the where you've been in the map, making any fuel changes and stuff like that. You know, you can highlight it and you know hit the minus button, plus button. Um, and then that stuff will, you can do all that live while you're running the engine, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, there's all types of additional fuel tables. You know, you can change these axes if you wanted. So if, if you wanted to, um, make this be throttle position, you could easily do that. And maybe it's... go throttle position and then it just asks you what do you want to have it set from so go from like zero to 100 percent so now you're actually looking at a, at a throttle based so I'll try to do two things at once here and probably fail but so I'm moving a TPS as well as my RPM around now to sort of show you where I'm where I'm driving around here So anyway, that's kind of how some of that stuff works. In addition to that, you also have a, a live logger down here that you can put as many channels on there as you want. And this is kind of slick in that, um, like if you're running the dyno, or like in my case, I was in a sand rail um, with a laptop connected, you know, in the passenger seat. Um, I could go make a, you know, go make a run, have my air fuel, boost pressure, all that, all that good stuff in this live logger. And as soon as I get done making a run, you know, you hit the P button to pause, hold the shift button, and highlight a section here. So if I wanted to auto-tune this section here, go down in selection, um, auto-tune auto VE, and then any changes that were made based on what your uh, Lambda looked like compared to your Lambda target table, um, it would change your VE table for you and then it would highlight those cells I think in blue showing you that those have been changed so anyway a lot of neat stuff in here um, sorry for rambling on so much but I kind of like looking at this stuff and um, thought for someone who hadn't seen the software and stuff before that it might be beneficial